and booktube welcome back to my channel books ink and paper i'm lori and i'm back in the united states i'm so happy to be home even though i had a lovely week away and i have not filmed for a while since i tried to prep before i left so i may be a little rusty today but no less enthusiastic about this topic so i'm filming this on october 30th i anticipate that it will go up by the end of the day if not it will go up tomorrow morning which is my one of my favorite days of the year halloween i actually heard the other day that there's sort of a campaign nationally to make halloween a fixed day um, of the year rather than always the 31st of October. So in other words, making it a weekend apparently so that people can enjoy the celebrations that they engage in uh, when it's not, you know, not worry about it being on a weeknight. I, I don't know that that bothers me. In years past, I have taken Halloween off of work, I will admit. Uh, this year I did not because I was away for seven days. So I am trying to play catch up, but one of my favorite things to do on Halloween is to bake pumpkin bread and watch scary movies. And so I have set aside some time to do that tomorrow. And then we have this great celebration in my neighborhood. One of my friends puts on this fantastic party and we all bring candy and visit with each other and have lovely adult beverages and watch the kids trick or treat. So. What do you do on Halloween is my question. Post in the comments below and let me know. Do you like Halloween? Is it one of your favorites? How do you celebrate if that's a term for Halloween? And what's your favorite part of the, of the day? But today I'm here to talk about book to movie adaptations that are my favorites, really. I have thought about this and I, there are more than these, but these are my kind of 10 go-to movies that I watch or series that I watch year after year in anticipation of Halloween. So let's get going. These are in no particular order of um, whether I like one over another. I have talked about some of my favorites in the horror tag video, but these are the 10 that I usually watch um, more than once. The first one we'll talk about is Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Rosemary's Baby was a book that I read when I was younger and it was pretty scary. And then I saw the movie and it frightened me quite a bit too. It stars Mia Farrow, but the plot of the film and the movie are very true uh, to each other. There's not a lot of deviation at all. So this book and film is about a couple who move to a new apartment building in New York and they're newly married and they choose this incredible apartment. I just remember visually it uh, was even more stimulating than the description in the book, but they move into this apartment and they meet some neighbors who are interesting. So one is a young girl that she meets and they become friends and the young girl lives with an older couple. They're so sweet and they make her this little amulet with something that smells quite interesting and they just do everything they can to befriend this very young couple. So then the young girl that Rosemary has befriended uh, is found dead and it appears as though she's leaped out of the apartment where she was living with this older couple and rosemary is very upset by that she also starts to have some dreams about some weird things happening and then the next thing she knows she's pregnant and things just really get more and more sinister from there and she starts to believe that something awful is happening and she's terribly frightened and she tries to tell her husband Guy about her fears and he dismisses them and if you haven't read or watched it I really encourage you to do both. Ira Levin is a great storyteller and he particularly does 
suburban house um, couple stories very, very well. And I loved this film and I loved this book and I do think I plan to reread it soon. Another one I've talked about in other videos is The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. This is an iconic possession horror film about a woman who moves to Georgetown um, and takes her daughter with her. So the woman is an actress and they rent this beautiful home and her daughter begins to play with a Ouija board that she found in the basement of the home and then she begins to act really strangely and differently and a lot of medical testing is done and finally her mother says I think I need a priest and so she reaches out to a priest there at the one of the Jesuit priests there and it just escalates from there I don't know that I know of anyone that isn't familiar with the exorcist the book and the film are again very close to um, the plot, so the to the descriptions in the book. It it is a wonderful, wonderful film uh, adaptation of a great story. The others that followed after that, not so great, but they drifted because the story was a standalone novel. He didn't write sequels to it, and probably didn't want to write sequels to it. But it stars Alan Burstyn and. Um, uh, Linda Blair. I don't know why I can't ever remember her name. Uh, and a cast of really fantastic uh, actors and actresses. And it's probably the movie that I'm going to watch tonight. I will say that when I was young and I watched it, it scared the absolute bejeebies out of me. I had to sleep with my mother for three nights. I knew what was going to happen. I had read the book, but oh my gosh, it frightened me so, so much. And my dad, after the third night said, I don't know what you're going to do, but you're not going to sleep in my bed anymore. He was sleeping in my little twin bed in my 80s room, um, 70s room. But um, yeah, it was really, really frightening to me. But now it is not. And my children have seen it and think that it's the weirdest, silliest thing ever, but I, um, it still frightens me a bit, but I, I enjoy it now much more than I did when I was young. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson is a book that I was so-so about. I finished it. I think I gave it three stars. I felt like it was, um, a little slow for me and, um, I didn't love it, but I love the series that Netflix filmed last in 2018 and released in 2018. I love it so much that I am actually re-watching that as well. So this um, movie to, or series to book adaptation is a little different. So the book follows some people that are invited to stay at Hill House and they don't know each other. And so the, the researcher is trying to discover if Hill House is honestly haunted and so Theodora and Eleanor and Luke, the characters' names are the same from the book to film adaptation, but other than that, there's quite a departure. So the Netflix series follows a family who has purchased Hill House and they are trying to renovate it and while they are, are discovering that their kids are seeing some things that are disturbing and some other things are starting to happen. So the only real similarities are the names of the children for the uh, compared to the names of the original story. Other than that, it's a pretty clear departure, but I like it a lot. So um, read the book if you will, but watch the series if you haven't, because it's, I think, fantastic. And I watched part of it on a flight back from somewhere I was last year and I had downloaded the episodes and I literally screamed and jumped in my seat on the plane and scared the guy next to me half to death. <laughs> so that was fun. The Woman in Black uh, by Susan Hill is another book that I didn't, wasn't as crazy about the book itself, but I love the film and the film stars Daniel Radcliffe, who uh, is famous for his role as Harry Potter, but uh, I really think that the book was, was um, it was okay. It was just okay. So the story and the movie are 
pretty closely related. It follows a solicitor named Arthur whose wife has died and he is uh, hired by a, an estate of Alice Drablow to go to her home and to settle her affairs. And when he gets there, it's on the moors. It's a very classic, beautiful, deep, foggy um, experience. It's a great setting. When he gets there, he just finds that the house is really unsettling and lots of really scary things have happened in this little community and children have died and it's pretty um it's pretty creepy and awful and again I think the movie is well filmed deeply tied to the original book and uh, well done very well done 1408 by Stephen King is a book that I've never read um, so I can't say if it is a terrific book but I can say that I love the movie adaptation of it it is a book about a creepy hotel room or an, a room in an inn and some things that are haunted in that hotel room plague a man who happens to be staying there I love it. It stars, um, gosh, who does it star? Like, I feel like I can see him and I can't think of his name. Um, it stars John Cusack. Yeah. Who I really like. I really am a fan of John Cusack and, um, I think it's, it's creepy and horrible and well done. And I do, I think I own that one too. So I can watch that one in the next couple of days. I haven't seen that one for a while. I think a year or so has gone by since I've watched it. Number six, something wicked this way comes by Ray Bradbury. I am a fan of Ray Bradbury and this may be my favorite, um, story to adaptation of his. It is a story about Green Town, I think, Greenville, Green Town, Illinois, and a carnival comes, and the kids are very excited about the carnival coming to their community, but creepy things begin to happen as the carnival rolls into town, and they notice that uh, these creepy things are happening, and they are kind of uh, determined to figure out what's going on and to, to save the world from the menacing, um, haunted, horrible things that are coming in with these carnival people. Love it. I love a story about kids who are involved in some sort of hunting and are there to save the day. It didn't make my list, but I also love the adaptation of It by Stephen King. I didn't put it on my list, but it was probably 11. Uh, and I really like that one too. It was very, very well done. Number seven, The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. I love Daphne du Maurier's work. I am a big fan of her um, book. And um, the story is pretty pretty creepy. It was actually published in a collection called The Apple Tree that Daphne du Maurier produced. It's a short story and in the story it's a farmhand whose family is attacked by birds and in the movie it is about a woman who um, meets a man and in the city and she learns more about him and she's drawn to him and so she purchases to love birds and brings them out to this island where he's living with his mother and his daughter. And again, the birds begin to flock and attack people. And um, it's really, really creepy. And I love both the story and the film. If you haven't seen The Birds, it was actually produced by and directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's one of his more famous uh, horror movies. I mean, several of his are famous, but it ranks way up there with a few of the others. But it is definitely um, one that I watch again and again and again. And it's horrifying to think about birds attacking people like that. To me, it's horrifying. Number eight is a movie I just watched the other day. And it is the second adaptation of a book by Stephen King, and that is Pet Cemetery. Now, I loved the book Pet Cemetery. 
I hated the first uh, adaptation of this film. It was horrible. I think it came out in the 80s and it was just awful. Uh, but you might want to watch it just to kind of see what an awful adaptation looks like. But in 2019, Pet Cemetery was re-released and I saw it actually on the plane back from Prague. I was delighted by the new version. I think it's much better. It's a bit of a stretch from the original, but not too stretched. And so it follows pretty true to the book. This follows a family who moves out into the country on a very busy road where uh, trucks go by every day. And um, they move into this farmhouse uh, or not farmhouse really, but, but country um, setting and they're going to have this new life. And, um, and then their first, their, their neighbor comes and introduces himself and they like him and they get to know him. And then their cat is killed by one of the trucks that drives over the highway. And the neighbor introduces the man that lives there to um, the pet cemetery where people have buried their pets in the past. And um, then they come back to life, but they're not quite the same. Bird Box by Josh Mallerman is an example of a, an adaptation that I watched first and then read the book later. So I read the book this year, but I watched the film earlier in the year, I would say. So it's a Netflix original uh, film adaptation starring Sandra Bullock that it follows the book pretty well, I would say. Um, so it's about a, um, a sort of a plague or a, a disease that happens to people and they lose their minds and they see things that aren't real and then they uh, kill themselves. And so it, the story follows a woman who um, her and her sister are both connected in the book and the film, pretty close living together or living very close to each other. And when this plague hits the U.S., they... Um, one of the sisters goes crazy and experiences this phenomenon and the other one does not. And she ends up finding a house full of people that are trying to stay safe. And the deal is if you blindfold yourself and you don't look at anything outside of the house, if you secure the house, then hopefully you're safe. But, you know, meanwhile, this apocalypse is happening all around them. It's really, really creepy. I liked both the film and the book. And um, I would say that maybe I liked the film a little bit better, but I really enjoyed both of them. I think it was pretty even, actually. And the last one on my list is The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. I read the book first, loved it, loved everything he'd ever written, and then saw the movie adaptation with Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins when it first came out. And that first one is will always be my favorites. The others were just okay for me, movie-wise. The books, I loved all of them. Thomas Harris had a really great style of writing a psychological thriller that was so horrific that it really spans both the psych thriller and horror genre. The Silence of the Lambs follows a young FBI cadet named Clarice Starling and people will never forget hearing Anthony Hopkins say Clarice but anyway she's called into the director's office one day because there is a serial killer and they think that he the serial killer has some connection some way to Hannibal Lecter who is the serial killer who's been imprisoned for his crimes and is really creepy and he was named or called Hannibal the Cannibal because he often ate parts of his victims. Yeah, so horror, definitely. Psychological thriller, definitely. Great, great story with a couple of sequels and um, yeah, I love it. I watch it every year. So those are my 10 kind of go-to book to movie adaptations or book to series adaptations that I read frequently, reread frequently, watch again, um, really, really enjoy uh, these 
more, most of all, I would say, when it comes to this time of year. So you've got a little bit of time left. You can watch a movie. Uh, you maybe could get one of the books done. I read The Silence of the Lambs in one day, as I recall. Uh, it was pretty, I stayed up really, really late. That was when I was young and I had little kids, but I could stay up late and finish a book and not miss a beat. But um, you've got some time and they're available on a lot of different uh, platforms. You can rent them or stream them if they're available to you. And if you're like me, you have them in your Blu-ray collection. And so you pop them out and, and put them in the, in the Blu-ray player and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Happy, happy reading and happy, happy viewing. Bye.